What's up friends and welcome back to the channel. So I recently had this crazy-ish idea for an experiment, as I often do. What would happen if you put your body through temperature extremes overnight? I know, sounds kind of bizarre, but hear me out. So if cold promotes deep sleep, and warmth initiates REM, could we maximize both stages by flipping the temperature dial from super low to super high? Well, I decided to find out. And thankfully, I didn't have to travel to opposite ends of the earth to do so, though that would have been fun. But the practical side of me said, Katie, you have an eight sleep. And it can do all of that minus the jet lag. So that's what I did. And in this video, I'm gonna share everything that happened in this crazy experiment. The good, the bad, the sweating, the shivering, and pretty much everything in between. We'll talk about my anecdotal experience, which is hilarious. We'll look at the data, and then we'll wrap things up with my top takeaways including some pretty interesting correlations I was able to make between temperature, stress, and sleep. Now, I get that is a lot to discuss, so let's just dive straight in, starting with the setup of the experiment. And I gotta say, I ambitiously went out on a limb here, never having done anything like this before. So, this is what my initial stab at a three week trial looked like. Starting with seven nights with my normal autopilot settings, you know, as the baseline, then seven nights at eight sleeps, hottest and coldest settings while wearing socks and gloves, which is an idea I stole from Matthew Walker. Thanks, Matt. And then seven nights at the hottest and coldest settings minus the socks and gloves, which I thought wasn't a big deal. And sure, while my house isn't a lab, debatable, I wanted to conduct this study with the utmost scientific integrity. And so over the course of these three weeks, I would keep my evening routine as consistent as possible with things like bedtime, fasting, exercise, you name it. So that, my friends, was the premise. And I gotta say, I was pretty freaking stoked but perhaps a bit too confident in my own sleeping abilities because that first night with eight sleeps coldest settings, oh boy, talk about getting slapped in the face with a bag of ice. It was like my expectations and reality were at an impasse because logically from a temperature perspective, I mean, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, it didn't seem like a big deal. In fact, I'd call that a warm day in San Francisco. But sleeping on a 55 degree mattress in the middle of winter, after your body has already started to naturally cool down, well, that is a whole other level of cold. I mean, we're talking a bone chilling, spine shivering, can't really feel your fingertips kind of cold the kind of cold that startles you out of bed in the middle of the night and has you questioning your sanity and the logic of this experiment. Needless to say, I didn't make it to the third week. I mean, I barely got through the first night. So I had to make a call for the sake of my sleep and sanity, some adjustments they needed to be made. And to split the difference, I decided to revamp it and incrementally drop those settings by one notch each night. So we were gonna go from 10 to nine, and then nine to eight until, I don't know, I found some sort of temperature sweet spot that ultimately gave me the results I was looking for. Once again, easier said than done. Because every night seemed to have its own set of challenges. I mean, one night I'd wake up shivering, the next I'd be sweating profusely through my sheets. I mean, my sleep, it felt like a completely unpredictable train wreck 
sub subjectively speaking, of course. But normally, I gotta say, when I have a couple of nights of really poor, inconsistent sleep, I am pretty much a total useless mess and all I wanna do is go to bed. But oddly enough, that wasn't the case here. In fact, I felt freaking great. I mean, focus-wise, I was on point. And my energy levels were, well, let's just put it this way. I went for a run twice that week, which is not something I typically do by choice. So all these unexpected results, I mean, they did kind of throw me for a loop, but the skeptic in me figured it was probably a fluke. So of course I turned to the data to validate the actual truth. Here's where things get very interesting. So starting with my eight sleep data, and you can see that my average sleep score and my overall sleep quality score, well, they both kind of tanked during this temperature experiment, which is sort of what I expected given how much I was waking up and moving around. But what I didn't see coming was this. And well, here's kind of where my hypothesis starts to fall apart. During this experimental week, my HRV went up, my REM sleep improved, and my heart rate dropped pretty significantly away from the baseline. It was like I could see it, but didn't quite believe it. So I cross-checked against my companion sleep stats from the Aura Ring and Whoop, because you always gotta have some backups. And well, they basically showed the same thing. Once again, across the board improvements to my REM and these recovery scores. So needless to say, I was super perplexed. I mean, on one hand, I had this week of what felt like seemingly super inefficient sleep. And yet, physiologically, I felt great. And then data-wise, well, things turned out pretty solid. So I guess what does all of this mean? And perhaps more importantly, should we all be sleeping this way? Well, <clears throat> first off, this is not medical advice. Please read the disclaimer below. <laughs> and unless you live in a desert or you plan to sleep with multiple layers and a down jacket, I'd probably not recommend sleeping on the pod's coldest settings. I mean, even when I was living in Hawaii, I think the coldest I got was a negative six. So a negative 10 was kind of brutal. That being said, do I think this was a worthwhile experiment? Absolutely. Would I wear more layers next time? Without a doubt. But in all seriousness, I would consider doing something like this again because of the effects it had on one thing. And that is my stress, both from a physical and a data perspective. I mean, it's no secret at this point that my stress levels have been through some turbulence over the past couple of months. So around the time of the breakup in October, my HRV scores, they took a swift nosedive into the single digits. And well, they have been struggle busting their way to bounce back ever since. And so to see some concrete changes in the right direction regarding things like heart rate and HRV, and then to feel more like myself again, mentally and physically in such a short amount of time, well, that's plenty enough to convince me that this experiment did have some merit. And perhaps this could be something I do on occasion, kind of like a long fast, anytime I sort of need a stress reset. But I gotta say, it was challenging to get in bed those nights knowing that it was gonna drop down that low. It wasn't pleasant and even my roommate had some questions about what I was doing and why the sheets were wet. In hindsight, I probably should have told her ahead of time, 
but I think it's more fun this way. Anyway, the point being is it was an interesting experiment. And since then, obviously I've gone back on autopilot mode because well, it works and I don't want to screw up a good thing. But after it, I did start to lower my settings a bit just to test things out. And well, now my sleep scores are consistently in the upper 90s. So maybe there's something to this whole crazy experiment after all. <laughs> anyway, before I let you guys go, one last thing to note, and I'm not sure if you guys saw this yet, but I literally just stumbled on this new feature the other day. At least I think it's new. It's called autopilot summary. And what it does is give you a full breakdown of all the adjustments that happened overnight as it relates to your temperature changes and timing. This is really cool. Definitely worth checking out if you too like to nerd out on your sleep data. And who knows, maybe this means we'll be seeing some new stuff emerge from autopilot mode later this year. I have no clue if that is true, but I gotta say, sometimes it is fun to speculate. Anyway, that is kind of a wrap on this somewhat experimental video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. And chime in if you guys have been able to sleep at negative 10 and um, haven't felt like you were freezing to death because I would love to know how you did it. <laughs> anyway, leave a comment below, hit the like button, all the algorithmic things. And I can't wait to see you guys on the next one.